Hi, I'm Andrew Gacho with the TechCom team at 10X Genomics, and I'm here today to tell you about Visium HD and Loop Browser. Let's start on the 10X Genomics support site. So you can go to 10xgenomics.com, click support, scroll down until you hit Loop Browser. You'll need to install Loop Browser, and the great thing about this is that you don't need any programming experience. You don't need to write any code, but you do need a Mac or Windows machine. So click Download Center and follow the instructions here. Today in this tutorial, we'll be covering the HD tutorial. You can find that under Tutorials, Assay Analysis, HD Spatial Gene Expression. So in this tutorial, we demonstrate a human colorectal cancer data set to illustrate the potential of Visium HD to improve our understanding of the biology of this disease. We also have a preprint available online and please check the comments of this video to see the link to that preprint and stay tuned as we submit that for peer review. To load the tutorial data set, I've already loaded it, but you can follow the instructions in the tutorial. The first thing we wanna do is just get oriented here. So in the center, we have a microscope image here. And this is an H&E image. Overlaid on that image is the are the Visium HD data. <clears throat> and there's a lot of colors going on. So one thing that we can do to start is to look at the tissue image uh, saturation. And by turning it down to black and white, you can more readily see the colors that correspond with clusters. The clusters are shown on the left-hand side. There's 15 in total, and these are graph-based graph -based clusters that are output by Space Ranger. So you can pan around here and zoom in a little bit further. Uh, you can uncheck all, and then you can see just the tissue image underneath. So let's zoom in a little further. Notice here the scale bar is changing as we zoom in. Let's start by looking at cluster five. Cluster five corresponds to glands of normal colon mucosal tissue. And zoom in a little bit further. Switch that on and off to get a clear sense that this cluster corresponds with the underlying mor morphology in the tissue image quite closely. Another thing you can do is change the spot opacity. For instance, you could go back to your projection settings, turn the saturation back up to normal, and instead use the spot opacity. Okay. So the next thing we can do is to assess transcript localization. So to do this, we can switch to the features view and search for a gene. We'll search for a gene called FCGBP. And we expect this to be a marker gene for, for the glands of normal colon mucosal tissue. And indeed, we see that. So on the right, we can see the scale value is on a log two scale. If we set that to linear, we're actually displaying the unique UMI counts for this gene. And the scale indicates the scale of UMI counts that we get. For instance, zero to 58 means that the most we saw 58 UMIs in a given bin. Let's change the colors here to make it a little more user-friendly. I'll turn the opacity up a little bit. My personal preference is to turn saturation down when we have a lot of colors so we can clearly see one layer at a time. So now we can see that this color scale corresponds just to the UMIs. Let's choose one, let's say blue, blue green scale. Okay. Zoom out a little bit and you can really see again where these, where this gene is being expressed. 
it's being expressed where we expect to, there are a few scattered UMIs elsewhere, but we can easily filter those out. All we need to do is hit this filter barcodes and set this to a minimum of three or rather two. Now, this is saying that we have 25,804 barcodes found with at least two UMIs per bin. A bin is a collection of 16 barcodes. So the next thing we want to do is map specific cell populations. So real quick, just want to point out that Visium HD has what we call single cell scale resolution, meaning that the bin size of eight microns is smaller than most mammalian cells. So it's not the same as single cell resolution, it's single cell scale. That said, uh, the resolution is high enough that we can still map some interesting populations. So I went ahead and downloaded these five CSV files that are include, included with the tutorial. I downloaded these to the desktop and I can now import them into loop. So first make sure you click on features and then click upload and then select a file from computer. So I'll choose fibroblasts first and we'll zoom out. I'll turn off this filter feature barcode view so that we can see what's going on here. Okay, zoom out all the way. Now you can see where the fibroblast markers are and I'll keep doing this for the other ones. The macrophages. Neutrophils and the tumor. So now on the left-hand side, you can go back through what we just did, choosing the fibroblasts, goblet cells, macrophages, etc. And within it, each of these, you can see the different uh, marker genes. So for instance, REG1A for tumor is a marker gene for tumor. And these other ones, and you can combine them all below. Okay, so next we're going to discover other upregulated genes in a tumor cluster. So to do this, we're going to go on our features view and we'll choose our tumor markers and we'll turn on the filtered barcodes here such that we have at least two UMIs. Notice that I'm on the linear scale. We can save these barcodes. Um, we call it a new cluster tumor minimum two and to new group, CRC, just for this example, click finish. So now we have a custom group here. And let's say we want to look at what other genes are differentially expressed in these tumor cells. We can click run differential expression and it'll ask us what we want to compare. So we want to compare to the entire data set and hit start analysis and then hit continue. So this may take a few minutes depending on the data set size and your computer's performance. Okay, our analysis just finished and now we can see the upregulated genes in the group CRC that we just defined based on our tumor marker genes compared to the entire data set. Now you'll notice that some of these genes like uh, were actually included in that list that we used to define the cluster in the first place, like REG1A and 1B. But you know, you can also see a large variety of other genes that are upregulated. And in this way, Visium HD with the power of the whole transcriptome can be used as a discovery tool to discover new markers. Now um, let's just pick one of these at random we can add it to our gene list by clicking these three dots and add to feature list tumor. We go back to features and now you can see the distribution of this gene at quite high resolution. So there you have it. The discovery power of this HD makes it pretty simple to do this without any coding, without any programming. You can just open up the C loop file output by Space Ranger and get started right away.
Now, the next thing we want to do in our tutorial, in fact, the last thing is uh, let's use a new feature in loop eight, the co-expression the co-expression function. And we can use this to compare things like tumor tissue, fibroblasts, and macrophages. Let's start with LYZ, which is a general macrophage marker, and SPP1, which is specific to SPP1 macrophages. So we start by creating a new list. So we can search LYZ. and then rename this to LYZ. Create a new feature list, and then search for SPP1, and then rename this to SPP1. And now we can compare these groups down in the co-expression feature. So we click co-expression, then we can compare LYZ to SPP1. Okay, now this is interesting. You can zoom in and see the scale value here on the right is log two, and the color scales indicate that on the x-axis is LYZ. So anything shown in yellow has higher expression of LYZ. Anything in blue is SPP1, and anything in green has co-expression of both. And SPP1 macrophages are important in this in the biology of this disease. Check out the preprint that we have posted in the comments. We have more interesting biology about these macrophages and how they interact with cancer-associated fibroblasts in the microenvironment. So that concludes our tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the YouTube comments channel, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the next videos, we'll be going into other loop data sets and third-party tools and beyond. Thanks for your time.